Mail and spa services were just given the green light to reopen a little over a week ago with a long list of rules aimed at keeping employees and customers safe. But while some have been eager to get right back to business, not everyone is comfortable working in such close contact with others. I'm joined by Dana Bonner. Dana is owner of the Pink and Pretty Nail Salon in Dorchester, which is now back open. Lisa Gorman is co-owner of 360 Neuromuscular Therapy in Waltham, which is not. Lisa and Dana, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Dana, starting with you, why'd you feel it was safe to reopen? So I felt like it was safe to reopen because we had got everything ready in our salon, meaning like the plexiglass. We had definitely got all the supplies for the salon and our clients definitely were reading our COVID-19 page. So we just, we were definitely ready for it. Lisa, you were not. Why'd you decide it wasn't safe for you or your customers for your place to reopen? Yeah, it was a really hard decision and we spent a lot of time looking at the regulations and we wanted to open without having to close again because we ran out of supplies mm. um, and we're also concerned with the vast differences of people's uh, immunocompromised situations they may have or may whether they know it or not so you know once- speaking of supplies though can i touch on something you just uh, said you know, we've heard huge institutions with tons of money unable to get inadequate inad- uh, uh, amounts of PPE. Starting with you, Lisa, were you able to get what you need, gloves and masks? And how'd you pull that off if you did? No. Well, and that's part of why we're not open, because I see. Um, we ordered gloves, appropriate gloves for our services. And it's twice the price. And they're back ordered mm. until the... 15th of July, I believe. So getting supplies is not easy. And we intentionally didn't stock up early on because we wanted other sectors that needed the supplies at the time to have them. Wow. That's a pretty generous act. Were you able to get the PPE you needed, Dana, for your operation? I was. I already had a lot of my supplies before we actually closed down because we use a lot of those supplies to for the salon in general. So we were, we were prepared, except the plexiglass, of course. You know, Dana, you guys are both involved in businesses that are, are really intimate. I mean, you can't get much closer to a human being. Well, you can, but you can't get much closer to a human being in a, in a business kind of setting than you do. Were, was there a pent-up demand? Were people ready for you to reopen? Or is there a lot of, you know, you sort of give me a minute to get ready? this from customers so customers were ready but we weren't we wanted to make sure we were personally ready to bring them into the salon and make sure that nobody was infected or anything so we took a week before governor baker announced and we opened the second week oh you did you know yes. it, and Lisa, you mentioned your concern for the health of your customers, and obviously that varies. And I assume you don't want to be in a position where you say to somebody, sorry, you can't come in because we're concerned about your health. But the flip side of that is for a lot of people, massage therapy is an essential service. So what do you say to a customer who says, I totally respect uh, your respect for my health, but I need you? What do you say to them? Well, we talk about how our staff and therapists also, their health is an issue um, and that it would just absolutely break our hearts if we found out that one of our patients or one of our therapists or admin staff got sick because we were open. Can so we, we just move from, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, that's you okay. Go ahead. I just... <laughs> Um, so we just have been trying to be as kind as possible and just reassuring everyone that we're doing the best that we can for everybody. Are you worried about surviving this financially, Lisa? I have to say that our company is exceedingly fortunate. Uh, my business partner and I both um, applied for a bunch of grants and stuff, and we got the PPP loan as well as an idle loan. And so since our biggest expense is... Um, wages. Everyone qualified for unemployment right away. So our, really, we're paying rent and a few utilities and our landlord has been awesome. So 
I'm not really worried. We're we don't the company no longer has savings, but we've we're able to take care of what we need to in order to be able to open when we can. Dana, correct me if I'm wrong. Speaking of money, didn't you just buy this business and open maybe what several weeks before you had to sh shut down? Am I right about that? No, actually, I actually bought the business a year ago, so I was actually oh, prepared for it. Yeah, so I just what you, recently. How do you prepare for something like this? What do you, when you say you're prepared? How do you prepare for something that hasn't happened in a hundred years? Um, it's called rainy day savings. So <laughs> we definitely <laughs> prepared for something when it came. We just didn't know what it was. Well, you taught me a lesson there. So before I let you go, uh, talk to your customers for a second, Dana. How do you assure them they want to come in, but they're a little anxious about safety? How do you assure them that it's a safe experience coming into your place? So before or after you book an appointment, you have to visit our COVID-19 page. And if you fail to read that page on our website, you will come to the salon and there will be a stop sign at the salon. And you will read that um read that stop sign which basically says wear a mask text this number wait outside all the protocols that were taken before clients enter the salon and don't forget to tell them to have a personal rainy day fund too that's really important oh, yeah. you know that. and so lisa for people who are waiting for you and saying they want to keep hope alive what do you say to them we just keep telling our patients to bear with us and we are have their best health at interest and we're doing our best. Um, once we have all of our supplies and a good stockpile of them, because we don't want to have to close within days of mm -hmm. opening because we're out of supplies. Um, so once we have stuff and we feel like it's safe for all of our patients to come in, not just those who don't have any immunocompromised situations or um, are under 65, for example, like, that's not fair mm -hmm. to do that. So as soon as we're at a point where we feel comfortable having everyone in. Fair enough. Lisa, Dana, great to meet you both. Good luck to you both in the months and years ahead. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very much.